Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another interesting video. Now in the previous video we talked about the accuracy part of the current transformer. We saw there are two different accuracies metering and protection. And in this video we are going to talk about one of the very important concept of the current transformer which is the burden. We'll talk what is a CT burden and what are all the things that makes a CT burden. Right. So let us talk on that part. So when we say about a CT burden, what do we mean by that? Is it something that we are putting, let's say, maybe on top of the CT tank, which is causing the burden on the CT? Is it the case? Well, of course not. It is not the case. Then what is the CT burden? Now, what you can see on your screen is a high voltage current transformer. So this is the tank, the top tank wherein all the cores will be placed. Let's say this is the core we have and from this core, there will be a primary conductor passing through it, right? So basically this winding act as a secondary of the current transformer. And from this top tank, the wires are running through this bushing that you can see the porcelain bushing. And then, and then there will be a terminal box at the bottom, which you can see right here. And there you can give this output to maybe a relay or maybe a meter so in a very simple term the burden means all the things that you are going to connect to the secondary of the current transformer so it can be a relay or it can be a meter or it can be anything else that you are connecting to the secondary of the current transformer that is what we call as a burden right and this explanation what we are going to see today is applicable for all the instrument transformer it is not the case that this is only limited to current transformer no this is applicable to ct also this is applicable to inductive voltage transformer also and also for capacitive voltage transformer so basically all the instrument transformer will have the concept of burden and this explanation will stand true for all the instrument transformer that we have so again in the simple words the burden is everything that we are going to connect across the secondary of the current transformer or any instrument transformer. Basically, it is nothing but the total impedance that we have to measure. Now, let us look at what IEC has to say about the burden. Now, what is IEC? IEC are basically the standards using which all these products we manufacture and it is accepted uh, in major majority part of the world. So basically IEC acts as a Bible for all these uh, products, right? And for instrument transformer, the IEC that we have is IEC 61869-1. Now one is a general requirement. The standard one specifies the general requirement for instrument transformer. Now as per that standard, the definition of burden given is admittance or impedance of the secondary circuit expressed in Siemens or Ohms and power factor. Now, if you're using the term admittance, then definitely have to you use the unit Siemens. If you're using the term impedance, then you have to use the term Ohms, right? But there is at the bottom, you will see one important note is given that the burden is usually expressed as the apparent power. This is very important. Apparent power in volt ampere absorbed at a specified power factor and at the rated secondary voltage or current right again this definition is common for all the instrument transformer so basically what the definition says that we have to calculate the impedance of the secondary and that is nothing but we call it as burden now if you see the load that we are connecting to the ct is uh, generally you know uh, there will be relays meter and those are resistive lo load majorly but when we talk about ac circuits we do not use term resistive right why because in ac circuit we have a more comprehensive term which is called as impedance right we have already talked about impedance in detail in the ac circuits playlist if you are interested you can go and check that out that is very very helpful if you are a beginner so that is why we have to refer it as impedance and we cannot refer it as resistance in re ac circuits for dc circuits yes that is acceptable for not 
and not in ac circuits so these burdens are generally expressed as a apparent power and in volt ampere now for apparent power the unit is we have is volt ampere or v and that is the reason why if you see the name plate of current transformer you will find something written as 10 va so that indicates that this particular current transformer is capable of delivering 10 va right so always remember that the burden in case of instrument transformer is referred by the apparent power and the unit is volt ampere now if we have to say that what makes a burden on ct the majority of the people will say it will be the relay that we are connecting to the ct or it will be the meter that we are connecting to the ct this consists of the burden of the ct well you are partially correct but not 100% correct these are the contributing factor uh, to the burden of the ct but not the only factors we'll talk about what are the other factors in coming slides but before that definitely go and check out courses.theelectricalguide.in there you will find the easiest courses on electrical engineering we have courses on electrical machines power system basic course on substation and then there is also a advanced course on the circuit breaker control schematics we are also adding lot many courses there definitely go and check it out now what are the things that makes the burden on the ct let us talk about that so the first thing is the sum of all the resistance present in the ct secondary winding now we see we saw that this tank consists of the windings of the secondary side so these windings are made up of again conductive material so definitely they are going to have some resistance plus to have the connection at the bottom we have to run some cables through the bushings right and that cables are coming to this uh, terminal box and from where you can you are taking the output to your relay or meter right so this wire will also have some resistance right and that will be acting again as a burden on the ct so when you are doing the calculation you have to also make sure that you are counting this secondary resistance of the winding now this resistance is generally specified by the manufacturer of the current transformer but very important to keep in mind while calculating the burden on the ct so that is the sum of all the resistances present in the ct secondary winding this is one the second important parameter that adds the burden is the resistance of ct's lead wire now you are taking the output from this terminal box right here and you are giving it to let's say a meter now meter will not be placed immediately after the ct right there will be control room and in that control room there will be a meter so from this terminal box you have to run some cables and then give it to the meters uh, that is placed in the control room now this again will place a burden on the current transformer because the distance for let's say it, it is 10 kilometers long from the ct just hypothetically i'm saying so you have to also you run a 10 kilometer long cable and that cable will have some resistance and that resistance again will act as a burden on the current transformer right understood and that is the reason why uh, while choosing the secondary current makes very very big impact on the burden on the ct so we have two choices mainly used 1 ampere or 5 ampere now let me know in the comment section below which current rating will give us a less burden whether it's 1 ampere or 5 ampere and this is something that we have to do with i square r losses so which current rating will give me less i square r losses comment down below the third important parameter is the resistance present in the meters relay or other devices connected to the ct of course this is the very obvious things now since we are into the digital era now all the meters relay they are gone digital and the burden requirement has significantly dropped compared to the 20 30 years before right where the everything was manual and then the requirement was very high we have also seen some cts or instrument transformer having 60 va or 100 va or even 200 va this is too much actually in today's uh, digital era in today's uh, digital era the meters the relays have significantly reduced the burden requirement the resistance has significantly reduced and if you see the standard values nowadays that starts from 5 va 10 15 20 25 30 40 
30, 35. These are some of the standards value that you will generally see on the nameplate of any of the instrument transformer. So these are the three main things that consist of the burden, the sum of all the resistance present in the CT secondary, the resistance of CT's lead wire and the resistance of the meter relay and other equipment. So when you put all these things, then you will arrive at the total burden requirement of a current transformer. Now we have to keep in mind that you are defining the burden uh, very accurately because let's say if you define burden as 100 VA and the manufacturer also produced the CT considering 100 VA but actually the power taken by the CT uh, from the CT is only 10 VA now this is very very less compared to the rated burden and this is going to affect the performance of the CT because the accuracy of the CT also depends upon the burden of the CT. The accuracy is only guaranteed. Now, this is the statement made by the IEC, right? The accuracy is only guaranteed either at 100% rated current or 25% uh, rated uh, burden, sorry, not current. So, between this range only, the accuracy is guaranteed. So, if it goes above 100% or below 25%, then the accuracy is not guaranteed definitely you, you may not get the accuracy that you want at 10 VA. So that is the reason why defining the burden, a specific burden for any instrument transformer is of a key importance, right? So that is all about the CT burden. I hope you found it useful. And if you like the video, then do subscribe the uh, channel to get the updates on all the upcoming interesting videos. And do share this with the people you think might be interested in knowing. So thank you for watching guys, I'll see you in my next one, but till then, keep watching, keep learning.